A critical communication system shared with most public safety operations across the state of Florida is the newest tool that the Polk County Emergency Management Team is using to alert the residents and visitors to Polk County. All of the details are coming up on Polk Place. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host, Brian Lacey, and joining us in studio, well, no rookie to the Polk Place uh, lineup. <laughs> Been in here a couple of times. Pete McNally. Pete is the Emergency Management Director. How you doing, Pete? Great. How are you, Brian? Doing great. And uh, to Pete's right, our hero, well, some of our <laughs> heroes. <laughs> Uh, Paul Womble. Paul is a, a program manager with Polk County Emergency Management. Uh, you've been in a few times for tapings, right? A couple times, yes. Yeah. So, uh, in all actuality, I should let you guys come over here and ask the question. I'll go over there and answer it, if you don't mind. You Perfect. Want to? <laughs> you know the answer to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I think we've done this a time or 20. <laughs> Pete, can you tell the folks at home exactly what the mission is of Polk County Emergency Management and, and, and how you guys work to keep the, the residents and visitors of Polk County safe. Sure. Our goal in emergency management is to be the planning training exercise branch for emergency operations for the Board of County Commissioners. So what we do is we uh, again do the planning, we run the training and exercising portions of uh, different facets of what we need to do to make sure our staff is ready and uh, our, our staff, not just our emergency management staff, but the BOCC folks who work with us and other partners who work with us in those operations. Uh, our goal, obviously, is to make sure that we can maintain uh, the safe operations and safe communications with the citizens of Polk County so that they can know what's going on, what they need to do in order to keep themselves safe. And that happens before, and we hope most of it's before, but then during and again, most importantly, after something happens, a major event happens, a major hurricane or a major disaster that we have to communicate with them so that we can make sure that, again, we're getting the information to them that they need in order to be prepared to survive an event and then to get the resources they need after the event is complete. Now, one thing that, that Pete had mentioned, Paul, is, is the training. And with the, muni the municipalities located within Polk County and just our, our sheer size of over 2,000 square miles, talk about that training, that uh, I, I, um, the thing that you say that I love when, when, when we do that training, it's you know meeting the people for the first time in, in a situation. Talk about that training that goes on and how important it is to meet them for the first time in a situation like that rather than say when the balloon goes up. Well, we, what we say is we don't want to have to meet someone in an agency at two in the morning on a dark and stormy night and learn who they are, what they do, what they're responsible for in an emergency. You don't want to you, you do that in blue sky days. So uh, we want to make sure that everyone has coordinated their plans, know what we do and how each other work and it's really about building those relationships uh, with the cities and all the of the private nonprofit volunteer faith base. Uh, many folks have a role in a disaster so our job is to bring all those people together in, in you know before disasters happen in peacetime and, and learn and, and practice and just like sports or any other thing you you want to practice and then when the time comes you know then you're ready to go uh, and you 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 uh, you you play how how you train. Mm -hmm. Now, Pete, one thing that Paul had said he had mentioned the the local entities. We have incredible partnerships also with the National Weather Service and, and FEMA. And you know, within the last year, a, a group of Polk County and and other munis municipalities had had gone to Emmitsburg, Maryland. Talk about that training opportunity and, and working directly hand in hand with FEMA. Sure, that training opportunity uh, was made available to us through an application process. It took, it's a community uh, interactive training type of a course, so we can take up to 75 members of our community, and that doesn't mean emergency management. That means, as you mentioned, municipalities, the same kind of groups that Paul just talked about. We took representatives from all of those groups. There were, again, 74 of us that went up there 
for an EOC-based exercise of a Category 3 hurricane coming through Polk County. So we actually set up a mock emergency operations center and went through the entire pre-disaster, pre-impact, post-impact, and then some recovery operations. Uh, a great opportunity for folks to just concentrate on the training. That's the one real key about going up to a place like that is that it's remote. You're not going to be called by your boss and I got to go and do this tomorrow morning. I can't make it for that. You know, you, everyone is there on scene, go through the same training, the same pre-exercise, pre-event types of briefings, and then going through the same scenario. So they're living together, they're getting to know each other, uh, and they're getting to know the capabilities. Uh, one of the things we tried to look at there too, in this particular uh, operation taking folks up there was that there's a lot of folks um, yours truly, one, who are going to be leaving here in a, in a very short time, uh, year, two, three, whatever it happens to be, we want to try to get some folks some key training, some important training who are going to be here for a while longer than that, or who haven't been through some of the experiences that we've been through in the last 10 years. So the key to selecting the team to go up there was trying to get folks who would be filling those key roles for the next 10 years or so, and so that was part of our selection process as well. So now we've got these folks who've been through a very rigorous training, very focused training, uh, and, and have worked together as a team. And so that was probably the major benefit of the trip. If there's one thing that we learned from the hurricanes of 2004, having the right tools to get things back on the road to recovery within here in Polk County is, is a key to, you know, making life normal again and mm -hmm. and the board of county commissioners really got behind what uh, emergency management was doing and they saw in 2004 that we needed a new facility and talk about the facility that, that we yeah, have absolutely now. as you were going through that question the first thing that came to my mind was the thing we really needed was a new emergency operations center a center focused solely on operations immediately before during and after an event, so you wouldn't have to change facilities, wouldn't have to go to a place that hadn't been set up. This place is ready to go 24-7 for any kind of operation. And they got behind that. They saw the importance of a, a dedicated facility for those type of operations. Uh, we had the opportunity also to get some state funding because the state had been through nine directly impacting hurricanes over a two year period, and they saw the need uh, the state legislature did for a lot of emergency management type programs, one of them uh, to either build or enhance those EOCs that needed enhancement or need to be replaced, and ours was certainly in the latter case. Uh, so money was made available, we applied for that, got some, the, the county also kicked into that as well, and we also got some federal money for some mitigation to build it to a higher wind level than uh, the building code is, so it would be withstanding of any kind of serious winds that came through. So all those things came together for us and uh, between 2008 and 2010 we built a brand new facility on the uh, public safety campus out in Winter Haven. Now Paul, as we talked about having the right tools, the facilities, the ability to uh, work within that system, one of the most important tools is to alert the residents and visitors of Polk County up until recently we were alerting them one way and now we've gone to another way. So let's talk back up and talk about the old system and getting the message out for any kind of emergency and now what we have. Uh, we've had a long history with emergency notifications systems and as technology has changed over the last decade for sure and even the last you know, year technology changes you know, the old systems were landline based, you know, basically your house phone, or how, how many folks still have just a house phone? They have cellular phones and they have all the social media tools. So the, uh, the concept of the systems haven't really changed too much. The, the goal is to have a system where uh, government officials, you know, folks that are authorized to send emergency messages can reach, you know, reach the citizens, reach the visitors and, and alert them. It's, we have, uh, severe weather, we have you know, uh, criminal threats, have uh, many hazards that could happen, not likely to happen, but when they do, folks need to, citizens really need to have a way to be informed, you know, to get that alert, and then to have a plan to take some action once they realize that they're in an area where a threat is occurring. One of our challenges is Polk County with over 2,000 square miles, it could be severe weather in Lakeland and still a, a nice day and frost proof. So, 
the, ge the systems work uh, geographically. We basically can draw a box on a map and uh, target messages to those particular areas. The weather messages that are part of Alert Polk, the new system, uh, they work the same way with, with the a polygon that generates from the National Weather Service. So if they issue a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning, then the system automatically will notify people that are in, that have registered, either in, that are in the box. They've either registered or through uh, commercially available telephone data that the system uses. But we know that that's limited. That's based off of landlines. That doesn't include cellular data. So the key to the system really is to getting uh, people to register, um, to go in and enter their address, whether it could be of their home, their business, uh, their school, for their kids' school. As long as it's an address inside Polk County, you don't have to live here. If you, uh, you know, your, your mother or your, your, your kids or whatever, you know, you, you can sign up to, to receive those notifications that are, that are geography based. Mm -hmm. Now, the system itself, how do they go about A, signing up, and then also there's a level of information, whether it be emergency or community. Let's talk a little bit about that. Correct. So to sign up, you simply go to alertpolk.com or you can go to the county commission website, polk-county.net, and you'll see an Alert Polk logo in the upper right hand corner. Either one of those places will get you to the member portal where there is a FAQ section. There's an overview of the system. Uh, but most importantly is the registration form. It's a four-step process. And it's really no different. You enter, uh, you create an account with a username and a password, enter in the address. And then you provide the, uh, either your email address, your cell phone number. Uh, if you want to receive text messages or only email, uh, you know, you, the user, the folks registering can make those decisions how they want to be notified. And then uh, the weather piece, you automatically, if you register, you automatically get tornado warnings. But you can also opt in for severe thunderstorm warning and an aerial flood uh, advisory statement from the weather service. And then the other piece um, is the community informational messages. Those are type of messages that may not rise to the level of an emergency, uh, but folks can opt in to still uh, receive information either from uh, Board of County Commissioner's agencies, Polk County Sheriff's Office, uh, and eventually the, the municipalities will be able to use the system. City of Lakeland through Lakeland Police is, is uh, one of the initial users, and at some point later this summer, uh, we'll be reaching out to all the other cities as well. They can use the system at no cost. Let's talk a little bit about being good stewards of the taxpayers' money. The thing that's best about this system you'd mentioned is that it's, uh, it's, uh, there's many of us that can use it, uh, whether it be SO, local law enforcement. Uh, uh, talk to me a little bit about how that's funded and what the difference is between the old system that we used and now this one and, and where that's coming from. Well, really, the old system was locally funded uh, between Polk County Emergency Management, Polk County Utilities Division, and the Polk County Sheriff's Office. That came out of our uh, normal, you know, our local dollar funds. Uh, the new system is there's no cost to us. The state of Florida went out with a request for proposal and did the purchasing, and they're using state dollars to pay for this uh, as a statewide system. And then through an interlocal agreement between the Board of County Commissioners and the state, then that allows us to use the system. So collectively, we're saving uh, those three Polk County entities about $55,000 a year out of our budget um, by being able to use this new system at no cost provided by the state. One thing that we have, have seen locally a little bit to the south of us, a uh, tornado came through and uh, unfortunately people had passed and, and, and damage was caused uh, horribly to a, a community. And one thing that we know is really they only had about seven to nine minutes notification that this was going to hit. Now this system is going to enhance that if they're signed up for it. Talk a little bit about that. Correct. In, in Florida, we have very, as you mentioned, a very short warning time from the National Weather Service. Once they issue that tornado warning, and seven minutes is not very long to take action. So the sooner 
you receive a notification that that warning has actually been issued, it gives you a few minutes to take action and that's different, it's based on where you are. Uh, tornadoes are tough to take action for because you want to find an interior space, uh, whether if you're at home or if you're at work or if you're at the mall, there's you know three different places and you wouldn't potentially need to have three different plans based on where you are. But the key is knowing that A, you're in an area that a warning has been issued for and then know what to do. So the system helps provide you the warning and uh, that should be the trigger to put your plan in place. So Pete, uh, the emergency management professionals are always preaching being prepared and unfortunately a lot of the residents and, and visitors to Florida and to Polk County have just become so complacent. Talk to me a little bit about the importance of, you know, you, you see this coming, you have plenty of warning. Talk a little bit about having that plan and, and not being so complacent. It's really an awareness thing, Brian, uh, to what could happen, being alert to something potential that particular day or that particular season. You know, we always focus on June 1st, the beginning of hurricane season, because we know uh, somewhere in the next six months we get potential for a hurricane, and again, it come before, a little bit after, but that's generally the time frame. Um, we also kind of have a feeling when the severe weather seasons are, there are sometimes like now that is kind of a tornado season. We've seen some terrible events over in the Louisiana and uh, Mississippi and Alabama from tornadoes that could just easily, and just a couple of weeks ago, we had some severe, strong, uh, uh, straight line winds come through the county with a frontal passage. So we're ripe for that this time of the year. So people have to be aware of that, that it could happen. Um, we talk about personal kind of mitigation for events. Just be aware of what's going to ha could happen that day. If the weather tells you that it could rain that day, you're going to bring an umbrella. So there's going to be some severe weather, you should be alert to that. And again, one of the things that this alert Polk system does, it will provide you on your cell phone, if you carry that with you and your person, as most people do that have one, you can get that alert warning right there. And then, again, you have to keep in mind where you are and where you're going to go to be safe. But again, it at least gives you a leg up that you're going to possibly be uh, in for some trouble that day, at least weather-wise, and what you may think about doing as you go through your day and where you can go. And we just had a couple of weeks ago the uh, Severe Weather Awareness Week, one of the events that we had was a great tornado uh, planning day. It was Wednesday of that day where they had an actual test of the tornado warning system where people were asked to take a look at what their plan might be, what they might do, and uh, during a certain time, try that, test that plan out. Whether you're at work at that time or at home or whatever, you know, those kind of things we try to look at. And it's no different from anything else. So, uh, have a plan at home. We talk to folks all the time. The four-letter word in emergency management is plan, because that's the hardest thing to do, to, to try to make yourself aware of what you're going to do in the event of a situation, and then actually do that should something happen. Well, guys, as usual, always a pleasure having you in the studio and, and uh, the, the knowledge that you bring to the county and, and keeping the residents and visitors of Polk County safe. Uh, appreciate everything that you do. Our pleasure, Ryan. Ryan. Thank you. Polk County officials now use a critical communication system shared with most public safety operations across the state of Florida to inform county residents about public safety threats and concerns during situations which may affect the health, safety, and welfare of Polk County residents. Designated officials send out messages to telephone numbers and email addresses within the affected geographic areas. When the message is sent, you will be notified giving specific information about the current announcement. These time critical notifications will be sent directly to your home phone, cell phone, or email address. When you register, please be aware that the phone carrier charges may apply for all alert messages and data. You will only receive the alerts that affect the address that you register. Go to polk-county.net and at the top right hand of the page, click the alert Polk button to sign up.